Today we are going to take you to explore the Valley of the Kings. First, we'll take you into one of the most popular tombs in the valley. Then we'll take you into one of the tombs that requires an additional ticket and let you know whether we think it's worth it. Lastly, we're going to take you to our kids' favorite tomb. Wait till you see why they love it so much. Allow us to reintroduce ourselves. Our name is Going Going Back Back. In 2019, we had three kids under five, a new minivan, and a house full of things. With our eldest due to start school in a few months, we decided it was now or never to take an extended vacation. And so we set off to explore the world and be back in time for his first day. We were several months into our trip when the pandemic hit and schools around the globe shut down. It confirmed the idea that was already brewing in our minds, that there was no better classroom than the one our kids were already in, the world. We sold our minivan, gave away everything that couldn't fit into a suitcase, and became full-time travelers. Join us as we very slowly travel the world, going, going, going back, back. back. Where are we going today? We are going to the Valley of the Kings. Yes. All right, we are headed to the Valley of the Kings, passing some of these beautiful farms. You can see the hills of the Thebian necropolis over there in the distance. And then we're gonna pass one of the coolest sites to kind of just casually drive past in Luxor, the Colossi of Memnon. Named for the mythical uh, king of Greek legend, but in truth, they are statues of Amenhotep III, the Egyptian pharaoh. So here they are, the Colossi of Memnon. Behind these used to be the biggest temple in all of Thebes. You can see there's an active excavation going on there with the Temple of Amenhotep III. Unfortunately, there's not a lot that remains, but clearly they're able to find enough to make it worthwhile to, to excavate. So we're passing the Temple of Merimpata, and then here, actually, these are two slightly smaller colossi that were part of Amenhotep III's temple complex as well. So the temple complex extended for a huge expanse. And now driving along here, you're going to see the mortuary temple of Ramses II, which is a really cool place to explore, though it's actually not very often visited. You can see this doesn't look like there's anybody there at the moment. On the other side of the road are where the tombs of the nobles are. Yeah, and in those hills also used to be uh, Old Gorna, which was a uh, modern Egyptian uh, neighborhood. So we're walking through the vendor stalls. You have to walk through them to come in and out of the Valley of the Kings. They have some beautiful stuff. If you're interested, you stop and you look. And if you're not, you say thank you or shook down and you keep moving. So first you're going to enter the visitor center where you'll be scanned with metal detectors. Have to remove your bags to put through the scanner. So they have this cool 3D model in the visitor center that shows you where all the tombs in the Valley of the Kings are and how deep underground they go and the shape of them under the ground. The ticket office is inside the visitor center. Here they have an ad for the Luxor Pass. And they'll always have a list of what the open tombs are at the moment, which can change, and what the extra ticket tombs are that are open. So tickets into the Valley of the Kings are currently 260 Egyptian pounds, uh, which is about 13 US dollars. The ticket gives you access to three of the general entry tombs. And then if you want to get access to some of the additional tombs, there are additional costs. A thousand Egyptian pounds for Seti the first tomb, uh, 350 for Tutankhamun's, and 100 for Ramses the fifth and sixth. Because we're at Valley of the Kings, and the most amazing place is the slidey one. Extra fun. 
That is the tomb of... And so I'll have opened now, and so you need to scan your ticket as you're going in. And then you also have to get a tough, tough ticket, which has gone up <laughs> to 10 Egyptian pounds. It used to be five. But now it's 10. All right, we are on the tough, tough. Up to the Valley of the Kings. You don't have to take it, but obviously it's a little easier to get up there if you have it. So you can see it's a bit of a ride up there. So if you're walking, especially if it's a particularly hot day, it's really worth those 10 pounds to take the cart. And most people do. Ready? Yeah. Where is that one? Go on Lara Croft, tell us about it. <laughs> you know, I can't live on my Lara Croft days. That is very true, it's very true. So that's why my child's art. We really <laughs> love it. <laughs> this is where the real valley starts. Heading back, heading in. There's a nice amount of maps around the valley so you can get some idea of where you're going. It's really extensive. But most of the tombs are not open. In the Valley of the Kings, it's early afternoon at the end of October. And it's definitely not as hot as it's been, but it still feels pretty warm. We're gonna go into the tomb of Ramses IX, which is one of the most popular tombs to visit. It's quite beautiful and it's also quite uh, easy to enter and to get it back out again, which is not true of all of these. So you can see we are one of a crowd going in. So this is the beautiful tomb of Ramses the Ninth. They do have these plastic coverings up to protect the walls and the fluorescent light makes things shimmer especially against that plastic so the lighting isn't um, fantastic on video but the experience of it is really special what do you think they are Yeah, you see his clothes? Shukran. Is that what you think? Shukran. Okay. I can remember to the that? Uh, I don't know, babe. Well, she's next to Osiris, so... Daughter. Or maybe Isis, his wife? No, she looks too short. Yeah. Ancient Egyptians were really big on phallic symbols and then the Romans and Greeks and Christians who came after them were really big on erasing the phallic symbols but leaving cutouts in exactly the same shape so I'm not sure what they thought they achieved. As with almost everything in Egypt, look up. <laughs> the ceilings are often glorious. Watch your step, love. So to get to this point, there are no steps, but then you do have these down here. So you could get to this point and stop if you're having any mobility issues. So this is the chamber where the sarcophagus used to lay. It is no longer here, but the artwork in it is beautiful. So you can see the prisoners with their hands tied behind their back in different skin tones, some of them headless. There is a restaurant here. Of course the prices represent what the rents are that they surely pay 
in this location, but there's snacks in the gift store. If you're in need of topping up your food or your water or snacks. This is the tomb of Tutankhamun, the smallest of the tombs that's open in the Valley of the Kings. All right, we are going into the tombs of Ramses five and six, KV nine. This one will cost you an extra hundred pounds on top of your general entry ticket, but it is beautiful. One of the advantages of it being an extra ticket is it's a little less crowded. Assalamu alaikum. You're the queen. <laughs> Shukran. So one thing that's also nice about this tomb is that there is no plastic coverings. So you can get better views of the beautiful artwork. And again, always look up. The ticket for this one's an extra hundred pounds, which is about five US dollars with the current exchange rate. have the time and the inclination. It is definitely worth visiting. You can see up there on that boat, it looks like there's a baboon hitting either a giant pig or a very fat cow with a stick. It's quite random. I think it's probably a cow or a buffalo, but either way, it's a big baboon with a big stick. You can see the artwork here is just beautiful. There are these ramps here, which you'll need to make your way down. And they can feel a bit slippery if you have any mobility issues or if you just wiped out from the sun. So definitely, if you're coming here, stay hydrated. Stay in the shade as much as possible. Wear sunscreen so that you have the energy to see as many of these beautiful tombs as you can. What do you guys think of this tomb? Slippery, so you definitely have to be careful. I'm doing this. Yeah, this is, make use of the railings. This is the only way you can raise the distance. Are you starting to start? Hey, what are you doing? Try to drive straight. So, part of the original sarcophagus was reconstructed. The head of the sarcophagus is in the Cairo Museum. I'm not sure if it's moving to the gem, the Grand Egyptian Museum or not, but the uh, lower parts of the sarcophagus that you see here were all in pieces and all was put back together and put in, in situ here in the tomb. They must have used something to bind it together. But it was just all in pieces broken apart, I think probably by Tomb Raiders. And archaeologists pieced it back together. And they do not have the mummies. Unless they were in the cache, maybe they were in the cache of mummies. They found, hidden in one of the tombs, they found a lot of the royal mummies. So you can see down here in the burial chamber, it is extremely
extraordinarily beautiful and extraordinarily well preserved. The ceiling is stunning. Every surface is just absolutely beautiful. So everything that's in here was to help the king make it into and through the perils into the afterlife. So there are prayers and there are spells and there are whole texts. to help him on his way. What's the name of the goddess of the sky? Not. I think it's not. Right? Super stretchy. Because she is the goddess of the whole night sky. So she needs to be able to cover the whole night sky. Yeah. The burial chamber of this tomb is extraordinary and not to be missed. All right, saying goodbye to Ramses, the fifth and sixth. <laughs> Worth that extra ticket? It, I think it's worth it. But I really like the sarcophagus. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's like, I really thought the sarcophagus were much smaller. No, that they're massive. Yeah. yeah. I think it would be. Me too. What goes down must come up in ancient Egypt. <laughs> the ceilings are phenomenal and so, like the color is still so intact. How are you feeling, Gigi? Good. Having a nice time? Yeah, I'm Arrived at the kids' favorite tomb. <laughs> KV 47, the tomb of Sipta, AKA, what do you guys call this place? Don't touch anything else. KV 47, Sipta. 19th Dynasty. Go into this tomb. Tends to not have as many people in here <clears throat> because a lot of the decorations have been lost. The entryway has the finest decorations and they are beautiful. This tomb starts immediately with one of these ramps that's so a little bit slidey, <laughs> a little bit precarious. So watch your step. But don't forget to look up at those stunning colors. Unfortunately, chunks are lost, but what remains is truly beautiful, vibrant and rich in color. But the reason that this is the kid's favorite tomb is very simple. Once you get past the highly decorated area, once you get past this area where the walls and the ceiling remain somewhat intact and beautifully decorated, you come to what feels like a dark chamber. There's some lights illuminating it. but the walls look unfinished. Though I believe they're, rather than being unfinished, much of the artwork was lost in flash flooding. Just 
with the passage of time. If I'm not mistaken, some parts were uncarved. But you can't see anything anymore in this area. Other than what makes this the most exciting tomb in the valley from our family. The one with the slide. You ready, guys? <laughs> the train came apart! As you can see, this is a modern ramp and modern steps. They're not touching any walls or any part of the original tomb. And the parts of the original tomb that are here, you see undecorated rock at this point. <laughs> so there is more to the tomb <laughs> past the slide. It's quite cavernous in its size and also cave-like in the finishings that remain. But there is a treat when you make it to the end. There's a big, beautiful sarcophagus still in place in the tomb. And you can see the shape of where the decorations would have been in the tomb. But there's nothing left to see of the artwork. And here the only carvings that you can still see are those that remain on this gorgeous sarcophagus. So if you make it all the way down, there is that beautiful sarcophagus. But certainly no art to see on the walls down here. It's quite atmospheric though. I call the Mario Speed. Going out is definitely not as fun as coming in. <laughs> So that nobody touches the crocodile. Why? So it doesn't get damaged. No. Yeah, no. the scarab. Yeah. And the, that wolf. Is he a ram? I think he's a ram. Guys, that was it for Valley of the Kings today. How was your exploration? Ten. What was it for you? It was a 10. 10. What's yours? I give it a 100. Nice. A 150, I like it. Mine I like the enthusiasm. Mine's a 900. 100 and 100. Back out again through the market. Hi.